I'm back with another video. Today we got Become Who You're Afraid to Be, the philosophy of Carl Jung. It's on both screens. Without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Click the link in the description to get your free trial. Most people are afraid to fully be themselves. They're afraid to embrace the parts of themselves that might be regarded as unacceptable because embracing these unacceptable parts makes them feel uncomfortable. So to escape this uncomfortableness, they divide themselves into two halves, conscious and unconscious. In the conscious half, they construct an ideal image of themselves, an image formed out of the bits and pieces of their past that they deem as good and acceptable. And as a result, in the unconscious half, they repress the parts of themselves that they view as bad and unacceptable. In Jungian psychology, this repressed part of the personality is called the shadow. And unless the shadow is integrated into the personality, a person can never reach their fullest potential. Instead, one will always remain incomplete, fractured, and partial, living a life of regret rather than the full life that could have been. Imagine, for example, that I've solved a few equations and convinced myself that I'm a great mathematician. I might meet a few friends and they tell me that they have a math club. They gather every weekend and try to have a crack at math's most difficult problems. This scares me because if I join, I'll no longer get to be the great mathematician that I've convinced myself I am. Instead, I'll be a concrete person with actual strengths and weaknesses. And in this scenario, there are two possible actions I can take. The first action is to run from my shadow and let it grow. I refuse to join the math club and realize my own weaknesses as a mathematician. I get to cling to the ideal image of myself as a great mathematician, but as a result, I lose the opportunity to actually become one. The second action is to come into contact with my shadow and integrate it. I join the math club and realize that I'm not the great mathematician that I thought I was. In the short term, this hurts. I discover that I'm not very good at geometry, but also that I excel in differential equations. I become measured with my colleagues. I have an actual place and rank among other mathematicians. In reality, I realize I'm not the great mathematician I thought I was, but now I open up the possibility of actually becoming one. I can actually improve my skills and rank. In the long run, this ends up being the best decision I've ever made. See, in a way, we often prefer to be pure potential. We convince ourselves we could be whatever we want to be, but don't actively work to actually be something. We just comfort ourselves with the idea that we could be something if we wanted to. This is because when we work towards something, we start feeling our weight in the world. We're measured and ranked. We're quantified and actual. And this actual reality is often less pleasurable to live in than our ideal fantasy. But it's real, not a fantasy. And reality can be improved. But a life of fantasy always ends in tragedy. The path to self-improvement starts with self-acceptance. Only by embracing and integrating our shadow, by accepting the ugly parts of ourselves, by becoming who we're afraid to be, can we reach our fullest potential? But if we reject our shadow, if we pick and choose the parts of our past, personality, and behavior that we like, and repress the parts of ourselves we fear, we become incomplete and partial. And instead of living a full, whole life, we live one full of regrets. But it's up to you to decide. In Jungian terms, will you embrace your shadow or reject it? Would you rather fail in actuality or succeed in mere hypotheticals. And if you're interested in accessing more insights from great thinkers, I highly recommend checking out this week's sponsor, Wondrium. You may have heard me mention the Great Courses Plus before and how they can help you access wisdom from some of the best professors in the world, but they recently took that experience to a whole new level and rebranded as Wondrium. Wondrium has a massive collection of courses that are academically comprehensive thoroughly researched, entertaining, and presented by experts. I'm always looking to continue to learn about new topics and grow in new ways. And Wondrium makes this easy 
by continuing to add new content to their platform every month. I personally love listening to philosophy lectures on Wondrium while I'm exercising or driving because it allows me to get a high quality information in an entertaining and effective way. Right now I'm enjoying a course on the that's it for this video. Let me know what you guys think. Um, piggybacking on him being scared to join a math club, the math club thing. Um, it's like in his own world, he feel like I'm this great mathematician, but he haven't truly been tested amongst people that dwell in that field. So was it because he truly know or don't believe what he delusionalized himself to be like, oh, I'm this great mathematician and you shine away from competition, people that's actually in that field and working because they make you look inferior or insignificant or not. It could be multiple reasons. It can be because you truly don't believe what you say that you're this great mathematician. It could be because when you actually enter this field, everyone else will do so much better than you, you will feel you wasn't even qualified for this position. It's interesting. And, um, yeah, you gotta learn to embrace your shadow side or your dark side or whatever you wanna call it. Because after all, everything has its opposite yet equal reaction. You don't have light without dark, you don't if you just have all white and all light in heaven on earth, a lot of you will take that for granted. You wouldn't be as appreciative until you go through trial, error, and tribulations. Then it can make you actually embrace the moment and be more grateful and thankful for the good and the peace you do have. So it's like the yin and yang, how one side black, how one is white, and duality, I guess, in the middle. And yeah, you got to embrace yourself because it's bad enough when you have these negative thoughts in your head. And you self-sabotage it's you against your internal dialogue or whatever and that's not good at that point you're in balance you don't have a balance for you to be in balance you need to integrate your light as well as your dark and have a medium of balance and if you decide to put them in the background tragedy will struck and he will continue to torment you and talk trash about you and you will be anxious to think what others think of you and how you're perceived to them on top of the other battles that we deal with, like the indigenous Aboriginal people, my people being perceptionalized in a light that isn't in favor of us to what people have their preconceived notions of us due to how they depicted us and how they advertise us to the world. And people pick up on that and they perceive it to be the way they intended them to see. As other people, they got, they're born with the genetic makeup to win. They're born with a sentence to win to a higher capacity you can't obtain simply because of you're born with different settings and everybody else got their installation, their programming in their head of what is normal, what I may relate to, or what is already uh. So you deal with those battles and being imbalanced due to you are what you eat. That can throw you off real quick as well. You are what you eat. Whatever feeling that animal felt before it, it died, you consume it. Um, people are chemically imbalanced because they control the land, air, and water, which is the law. So it's particulates, metals in the air, chemtrails, um, water, fluoride, sodium fluoride, atrazine, birth control, etc. GMOs, genetically modified organisms, organisms in the food. And you're putting that in your sacred temple. they raping you at that point. They are literally violating your body and your, your right. And don't nobody else do nothing about it. You just look past the past like it ain't going to. Um, what else? What else? Did I get it all? Or? I hate that when I, I, I got it, I'm on the precipice of it and it just slipped through. After all, I do know it's not the matter of believing. I've noticed, not from philosopher and people that's wise and live longer through trial, error, and tribulation. It's from me self-assessing, introspection, looking in the mirror and seeing what's reflecting, just noticing the patterns, binary code of things. And I've noticed everything that's going to happen happened already. Time just got to catch up even though time doesn't exist, but we use that to give it, to have a term, a definition. I know time give us our relevancy like that we exist um, 
So yeah, everything that's gonna happen happened already. So um, I lost the point to that too. Like, damn, where is it going? Like, oh yeah, um, yeah, I truly know that to be. So it's like I can't just pick and choose when I want to believe that when it fit my narrative. So it can be the most wildest things that happen to me or whatever, and I don't get it for the time being. And hell, I might not ever get it, or it may take decades or what, but. I do know that to be fact. Like, whether you know it or not, it governs us and it's going to happen. And But at the same time, it's some weird medium to that yin and yang. It's like a paradox. Like they say, in every pretentious realm, a dimension, you doing every possible outcome. So it's like, it's tricky. And some things is simply unutterable for it exists as an entity in lanes which transcends all material words or symbols have to be experienced by the individual similar to a ayahuasca lsd dmt like psychedelic trip it's like it's colors in the spectrum that you can't see you can't describe i mean you can see but you can't explain it to no one else and you can't describe it and it's not the matter if you don't have the words for it, it just doesn't exist which is like true god or that's connect i know everything is god um And it's crazy. Be who you are afraid to be. That's true. In so many ways. And like nothing good happens in your comfort zone. It happens when you outside your comfort zone, when you got the cojones to conjure that up and do that and just step in a field that's you're not familiar with. So it's like you got all your receptors going off and you're anxious about things and you're thinking and you adapt and become this diamond and all that tie into one another. Be who you are afraid to be. And you know how the system, it's like a, a big component and reason why we tend to have the shadow self is because it may be deemed, you may be scolded for it may, or it may be deemed not, um, it may be deemed not acceptable. It can be you, just you with your bros outside of this YouTube, you know how they got guidelines and all that. Just like outside of this shit too, like I'm me, I'm saying the F word. You know what I'm talking about. So it's like things like that or whatever you say or whatever. It's not hate or none of that behind it. Whatever. I got brothers and all that and we joke with each other and say jokes or whatever. So it's like, you get what I mean? It's like you show the world a different face than how you really is. Because IRL, it ain't no community guidelines or none of that. I'll do what the fuck I want to do. You ain't finna tell me nothing. But um, that's a major reason I feel like why people suppress they self and a lot of it may be embarrassing to a lot of the consensus, the populace. What sent them through epigenetic memory for they for, from their forefathers? Some of them got bestiality fetishes, foot fetishes. I mean, I don't even know how I go from that to that because foot fetish ain't that crazy to that. But some got this attraction to kids. I got the video where Bosch was speaking on it as well. He was, it was people in the chat laughing pretty much. And he said, I'm willing to bet my, whatever he said, I don't know what's the words verbatim, but the sentiment is, I will bet my bottom dollar that, okay, we got such and such people in this chat. Out of such and such, at least such and such people have this attraction towards kids. People have things like that. I understand most are like that. Again, they ain't went nowhere. These colonizers that stole and raped and pillaged the land, these motherfuckers had kids. And it's in a blood you will suffer of your father's doing. That's a real thing in the Bible. Again, I don't think it's the words like that verbatim, but that's the sentiment. Example, if you, <sighs> your father wasn't around, you suffer of his doings. You never came back after he got milk. It is what it is. Uh, same thing for your mother as well. You will suffer. It will be in your blood. Whether it's talents, gifts, traits, sorrows, or you're scared of things and you don't know why. You got fetishes or weird things that you don't want to tell people about, but it's in you, not on you. But yeah, it's... And they try to paint like everything Walt Disney and everything is just normalcy or something like. Now I see through it all. They live. Mine get your shot in gone. I unlocked my third Timoy two one Cirtosis ago. I'm aware. Be aware. It's about people, places, and things. You're gonna go places. There's gonna be people there with things, buddy. Don't forget to like the video. If you like the video, comment, share, subscribe, turn on post notifications. DM me the link via X, formerly known as Twitter. Let me know what you want me to react to next or what you want me to talk about. Follow me on Twitch, Kick and Rumble. I'll see you in the next video. I'm out.